church was born. O Holy Spirit, come again from living waters, raise new saints. Let new tongues hail the risen Lord with burning words of victory won. Inspire our hearts grown cold with fear. Revive in us baptismal grace and fan our smoldering lives to flame. Please be seated, and you're not hearing the music. Okay, so let me Okay, it says it's disabled Okay, so I would invite you to join me in the opening prayer. Your spirit, God, works in our weakness until we are aflame with your love and power. Fill up your faithful desire that we may set the world ablaze through Christ. And we do when the Spirit, the honor and praise. Okay, this seems fast. Um, <laughs> our communion hymn is uh, 467. bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we are one body in this world. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we so many throughout the earth. We are one body in this one world. Many the gifts, many the words, one in the Bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Rain for the fields scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup 
awkward blessing which we bless and we go many throughout the earth we are one body in this one world. and please be seated okay <clears throat> This is not the table of Union United Church. This is not the table of the United Church of Canada. This is the table of Jesus Christ, and all are welcome at this table. The Lord be with you. And also love. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and your word brought all things into being. Through a burning bush, you spoke to your prophets and your people. With glowing coals, you touched their lips that they might speak your word of truth and justice. By fire and your spirit, you have guided us through the wilderness. We give you thanks and praise, O God, of wind and word, power and peace. Lover of all nations, although we have so often betrayed your promise, you have never left us nor forsaken us. You sent us Jesus, your gift of grace, our light and flame. You poured out your spirit upon us to create, renew, inspire, that all might be made whole. We bless you, for your spirit wraps us in your presence, drawing us closer in community. And so it is that on this Feast of Pentecost, we give you praise and thanks for your gifts, joining with all your people, that as one body we may proclaim your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. On the eve of his betrayal, Jesus renewed God's covenant promise. He took bread, offered the praising, broke it, and gave it to those who sat at table with him. Then at the close of the meal, he poured the cup of blessing, raised it in thanks to God, and passed it among them. Loving God, we rejoice in the gift of your grace, remembering Christ's life and death, proclaiming his resurrection, waiting in hope for his coming again. Grant that in praise and in thanksgiving, we may so offer ourselves to you, that our very lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church that we who eat and drink at Christ's table may share in his life. Pour out your spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your realm where peace and justice are revealed that we, with all your people of every language, race, and nation, may share the banquet you have promised. At this time, we also remember all those with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who mourn, especially the friends and family of the Reverend Dr. Grafton Antone and Anne Haycock. We pray for all who are ill or alone, especially. We pray for all those who are struggling, with difficult situations in their lives. We pray for your church and its varied ministries, especially Burgessville United Church, for the nations as they strive for peace and justice, for the people of the earth, especially the people of Angolia and Mozambique, for the earth and the fragile web of life we share, for our families, our friends, and for our enemies. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most high, now and forever. And we continue praying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hold that thought. I'm just going to do one thing up here. God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world, united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Okay, and so I invite the children to go on downstairs for Sunday school and have lots of fun. On the day of Pentecost, the church came alive with the movement of the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit moves in us and through us in the giving of our gifts, our skills, our time, and even our money. Our tithes and our offerings will be received by Canada Helps or Canada Post or by the offering plate. We can give our mind to understand your ways, hands, eyes, and voice to serve your great design. Heart with the flame of your love ablaze, to for your glory all our powers come on. We pray, Holy One, accept all that we offer. Move through what is offered to bring new hope and new life to all our neighbors, the ones we love, the ones we look down on, and the ones who look down on us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And so our psalm this morning is uh, parts of Psalm, part two of Psalm 104. So my soul, the Almighty, who rules all creation. O God, how manifold are your works. With wisdom at your side, you made them all. The earth is full of other your creatures. Bless, O my soul, the Almighty, who rules all creation. There lies the great and mighty sea, teeming with living things both great and small. Upon it sail the ships, and there is Leviathan, the monster you made to play in it. All these look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give them, they gather up. When you open your hand, you fill them with good things. But when you hide your face, they despair. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. But when, when you send out your spirit, spirit they, they live, live again. again. And, and you renew the face of the earth. earth. Bless, O oh my soul, the Almighty, who rules all creation. May your glory, O oh God, endure forever. May you rejoice, O oh God, in your works. When you look at the earth, it trembles. When you touch the mountains, they smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have been. Bless, O oh my soul, the Almighty, who rules all creation. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Numbers. Listen for the word of God.
placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, prophesied. but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one of them named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran out and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the son of Moses, one of the chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. May God add a blessing on the reading of this holy word and forever write its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And our hymn is number 205, like the murmur of the dove song. Like the murmur of the dove song, like the challenge of her fly, like the vigor of the wind's rush, like the new flame's eager might. Come, Holy Spirit, come. The members of Christ's body to the branches of the vine, to the church in faith assembled, to our midst as gift. So come, Holy Spirit, come. With the healing of the vision, with the ceaseless voice of prayer, with the power to love and witness, with the peace beyond compare, come, Holy Spirit, Joshua, the son of Nun. I thought it was Adam who was the son of Nun, except God. I mean, God created him. He didn't have parents. How did Joshua get to have no parents? Anyway, every year on this 50th day of year, we celebrate every year on the acts every year we hear the holy spirit descending upon his disciples like tongues of flame and then the disciples speak in many foreign tongues but the scripture passage from the book of acts is not the only scripture passage that the Revised Common Lectionary prescribes for this day. And so today we read the passage from the book of Numbers. And for a reason. You see, we, we tend to associate the sending of the Holy Spirit with that day of Pentecost read from the book of Acts. And I thought it was important that we hear that the Spirit wasn't there just on that the spirit was there in Moses time because that means the spirits here with us today so have I ever told you of the Christmas morning that I entered the living room and discovered that Santa had left me a jack-in-the-box 
you turned the crank, and it played. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. Monkey thought it all in good fun. Pop goes the weasel. And when you got to the pop, Jack shot out of the box. The toy held my fascination the first couple of times. But then I wondered, if you held the lid when you turned the crank, could you prevent Jack from popping up? You could. And then I wondered, if you applied a little pressure, could you get Jack to pop up at the wrong point in the tune? And if you did apply a little pressure, Jack would pop up whenever you wanted him to. It was great. Except that I broke the lock latching mechanism and so then you were never sure when you turn the crank jack might not ever pop or jack might pop up at any given time you just you never knew when jack would pop so we recently visited my one of my brothers-in-law his next door neighbor is having landscaping work done in the backyard. Their houses are very close together. Like so close that if you want to take a, uh, a wheelbarrow full of dirt from the front yard to the backyard, you have to have two wheelbarrows and you take one part way down till you get to where the um, electric meters and gas uh, meters are and dump the dirt from one wheelbarrow into the other and then take the other one the rest of the way. Anyway, so the access is between these houses. And part of the backyard fence between the two houses had to be taken down to get the wheelbarrow into the backyard. And the landscaping supplies and equipment are piled all over the shared front yard. And it's driving my brother-in-law absolutely crazy. He doesn't know when the work will be completed. And in the meantime, it's time to plant his flower garden. But he doesn't want to plant his flower garden because he's afraid that somebody's going to step on it or drop some big slab of stone on it and so he's, he's upset because he can't do the thing that he wants to do when he wants to do it. It's driving him crazy because he's not in control of what's happening in the front yard or between the houses or in the backyard. My brother-in-law not being in control of the situation sounds exactly like what Joshua was complaining about in the reading. Eldad and Madad are prophesying in the camp. My Lord Moses, stop them! The rest of the elders are prophesying at the tent of meeting where the Spirit of God rested on them. But the Spirit also rested on Eldad and Madad despite the fact that they were not at the tent of, the meet, of meeting but were in the encampment. Their prophesying was proof that the spirit was not only at the tent of meeting, but also in the encampment. It sounds like Joshua was complaining that the spirit was not behaving in a controlled and predictable manner. How dare it? But isn't that what control is about? predictability and isn't predictability really about a sense of security when we're not in control predictability goes out the window and we lose our sense of security and we can even feel fearful that's what's really going on with Joshua that's what's really what was going on with my brother-in-law. And what about us? Do we feel in control of 
everything going on in our lives? Can we know everything that's going to happen next? Do we feel secure in our future, whether it's short-term or long-term? So I ask you, what do you not feel in control of? The weather, yeah. the future, the future. Some, of my 4-H some of your 4-H meetings, <laughs> your health, the war in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, yeah. The choices that others make, yeah. Catastrophic weather events or earthquakes. Catastrophic weather events and earthquakes. How about anything locally? Government. Government. <laughs> Construction. Construction. Yeah. Thank God a couple of weeks ago I had three detours to get here. Now I'm down to one. Anything else that you don't feel in control of? The price of food. How many guinea hen eggs are going to hatch? <laughs> Anything else? So now I'm going to ask you another question. What do you fear could happen? The end of the world as we know it. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you think we're, humanity's going down the tubes and, and the world with it. Okay. Climate change. Climate change. So what do you fear? I, there are going to be huge numbers of refugees and where are they going to go? And how are we going to manage to feed everyone and care for everyone? So lots of refugees. Where are they going to go? And how are we going to feed the Earth's population. What else do you fear could happen? Loss of control of your own life and your own decisions. Yeah? that the price of groceries will not stop and will ever continue escalating. Hopefully not exponentially. Pardon me, Alan? We're just lucky to have food. We're just lucky to have food. Climate change will make it harder to grow certain foods. Yeah, climate change will make it harder to grow food, some foods, yeah. Especially our own gardens. There's even right now the drought. Yeah drought and extreme heat and things, yeah? Okay, so what things could happen that would be good things? Rent control. <laughs> Rent control. <laughs> Okay. What happened that could be positive? We wake up tomorrow. 
wake up tomorrow? People will realize they have to depend on God and stop pretending that we are gods, that we don't need God, we, but we do. Yeah. How about this? All the women in the congregation under the age of 90 will become pregnant and will have lots of kids and will have like 100 kids for Sunday school in two years. <laughs> Could that happen? Well, I don't know. You know, Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100, so... John, you're not 100 yet. <laughs> so allow me to share a secret with you. Control is an illusion. We are never truly in control of anything, except possibly sometimes of ourselves. Jack popped up whenever Jack wanted to pop up, regardless of what I wanted. The landscaping job will be done whenever the landscaping job is complete, regardless of what my brother-in-law wants. The spirit rested upon whomever it wanted to, wherever it wanted to, whenever it wanted to, regardless of what Joshua thought was right and proper. Allow me to share something else. While we may not be in control of nearly as much as we would like to think we are, it has been my experience and was the experience of the ancient Israelites that God is. God's Holy Spirit has an uncanny knack of showing up just when and where needed. God's Holy Spirit has an uncanny knack of bringing forth the right person or the right opportunity at exactly the right time. I've seen it in the church so many times. The moderator that gets elected turns out to be exactly the right person for the position at the time. But here's the catch. We have to recognize that person or opportunity for what they or it are, and we have to be willing to follow the Spirit's leading. We cannot control God's Holy Spirit any more than we can control the weather. But just as we all experience weather, we may all be aware of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Or, as Moses said, would that the Lord would put his Spirit on all the Lord's people. May it be so, this Pentecost. Amen. Okay. And our closing hymn number 380 on the wind. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. On a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night, full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. Silent waters rocking on, the morning of our birth, 
Like an empty cradle waiting to be filled And from the heart of God The Spirit moved upon the earth Like a mother breathing life into her child Many were the dreamers Whose eyes were given sight when the Spirit filled their dreams with life and form. Deserts turned to gardens, broken hearts found new delight, and then down the ages still she flew on. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun On a journey just begun She flies on And in the passage of her flight Her song rings out through the night Full of laughter, full of light She flies on Whisper softly calling in the dark The promise of a child of peace whose reign would never end Mary sang the spirit song within her heart Flying to the river she waited circling high of the child now from so full of grace. As he rose up the water, she swept down from the sky, and she carried him away in her embrace. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun, on a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night. Full of laughter, full of light, she flies on. Long after the deep darkness that fell upon the world after dawn returned in flame of rising sun the spirit touched the earth again again her wings unfurled bringing life in wind and fire as she flew on she comes sailing on the wind her wings flashing in the sun On a journey just begun She flies on And in the passage of her flight Her song rings out through the night Full of laughter, full of light She flies on Okay, use your outside voices and we'll make sure that Marion and Lee hear us. May the boldness of God's Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of God's Spirit lead us. May the gifts of God's Spirit equip us to serve and protest in justice this day and always. Amen. Never be afraid, God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. No, He will guide you in all you. 
Peace, but first stay for coffee.